Terry, the concept of classification into species and what determines a species versus an individual are some of the, the oldest and original questions in philosophy of biology. Uh, and some would really dismiss those kinds of things as things that have already been solved. But if you really think about how we understand the processes of biology, uh, understanding what the landscape is and how we have to deal with it is, um, is to me a, a continuing and recurring and renewing question. We're not just dealing with classical species and orders and things, classes, but we're dealing with new kinds of concepts. And when, I, when I'm thinking about this, the work that you've done and the thought that you've originated uh, on teleology, which is, a, uh, which is a, a, a verboten word, which is a dirty word in a sense because it seems to bring in non-physical or theological implications, you've talked about the importance of it from a naturalization point of view. So uh, can you articulate the naturalization of teleology with the classification of stuff we have to work with in biology? Well, obviously it's a difficult question and that's why it's been bothering us for so mm. many generations. Um, the, the challenge, of course, is to recognize what creates a biological individual. A biological individual in, is both informational and also physical. And that's because you can't have information that's not embodied in something. Um, but it's also, it's the information that gets passed on so that you and I, uh, across the durations of our lives, um, have changed physically, but there's been a continuity of information, yep. a continuity of organization, a continuity even of thought, um, of memories and so on. Um, so what this tells us is that, um, in a sense, the representational features the semiotic features, the informational features, um, are what I like to call substrate transferable. Hmm. Um, just like you can um, take the same shape and make, make it out of clay, make it out of wax, hmm. um, uh, carve it into a tree and so on. Um, that's what's going on here, that information is both needing to be physically embodied, but it can sort of move from place to place. So epigenetically, one of the things that we find is that, of course, our bodies maintain the same organization and information about how to organize it across changes in material. Um, clearly what's going on is that there is some, you might say, representation of what things should be that's maintained. And this is a telos, an end, a direction, that, that all of the activity of our bodies and of any simple organism is towards itself, a representation of itself in the world. Um, now, what that means is that we can now define individuality, or as an individual whirlpool, or an individual tornado, or some other regularity we see in the world. Um, doesn't have clear boundaries, but living things create their own boundaries because they have a telos, because they have a representation of themselves in the world, so to speak, even if it's just a chemical representation. Can you extrapolate this further that some would like to do and say, therefore, there's some sort of a trophism towards certain kinds of species based upon a teleology? Mm, it's a good question. I don't, I don't really have an answer for you on that one. Although what I would say is that um, I do think that one of the things that happens in the course of evolution is that um, species begin to fill any space that shows up Got it, yeah. So in, in some sense, uh, some people have compared this to the way the second law of thermodynamics is about sort of filling in all of the possibilities. Yeah, yeah. Um, evolution has begun to fill in more and more niches over time. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we find is that the niche that we're in, the niche of a species that spends a whole lot of time, you know, thinking and communicating with language and building technology and so on, this is a niche that could have been filled in. The problem is there's always new niches possible. And, and so evolution always is sort of expanding in a sense. This is something that Stephen Jay Gould suggested. He said that even if evolution is just sort of like a drunkard's walk, yeah. there's always more spaces you can walk yeah. into yeah. in the realm of more complexity. But there, you can't get much simpler, and you tend to sort of go beyond where you were. Evolution doesn't have to be going this way to just sort of be asymmetrically tending in that direction.
So that's not teleology in the sense that evolution has a purpose or an end. Um, but it has, you might say, uh, an irreversibility to it. It's kind of like a ratchet effect. Mm -hmm. that, you know, once you've crossed some threshold, you can't go back. And there's new thresholds that are showing up.